Well, welcome everyone to the 22nd annual STARS Banquet, Teachers and stu or Students and Teachers Achieving Academic Recognition and Success. Um, I'm the president, Tom Jacobson, um, of the Education Foundation, that is. And next to me uh, up here is uh, the next year's president, Kelly Reichdahl. So welcome, Kelly. The foundation is the host for tonight's event. We, uh, we hope you enjoy it. it uh, it's been 22 years in the making every year, and it's, each year it gets bigger, and each year it's a greater success. So uh, if you contributed to this event, we sincerely thank you. If you're sitting next to a table with a table sponsor, please uh, give them a thank you. We sure do appreciate everything they do to make this all possible. The foundation mission is to provide opportunities to students in many different ways. Um, we accomplish this through raising and distributing those funds to students through these events, um, our, through our angel fund, uh, through scholarships, and grants, and our technology initiative. So this, the uh, 622 uh, enjoys our benefactors, so thank you very much for helping us out. So I would like to introduce some of our, uh, our, the folks who are here tonight uh, from the public sector. Um, first of all, I'd like to recognize the mayor of Oakdale, Paul Renicki. <laughs> Council member Mark Landis. and City Administrator from the City of Oakdale, Bart Fisher. In addition, we have the Police Chief, uh, Bill Sullivan from Oakdale. Also, we'd like to recognize Candy Peterson, and she's the daughter of Hal and Marion Norgard. The Norgard Trust and the Foundation offer scholarships, so um, you'll be hearing about that tonight. In addition, we have uh, the Fulton Clinkerfuse Scholarship going to be announced tonight, and Chris Clinkerfuse is representing the family. So, and in addition, we have some school board members. Uh, Teresa Oje is here. Caleb Anderson, in addition we have all of the, uh, would all of the uh, board members for the 622 stand up please? Thank you all for putting this together, we couldn't do it without all of us, so thank you. So one of the things that we'd li I'd like you to do is just look around at this event, and if you know anyone that could possibly help us make it even better next year, give them the hint of how great this event is, and hopefully we can sign them up as a sponsor for next year. Additionally, one of the things I'd like to um, tell you about is the uh, fact that the board is always in need of great talent. And one of the, our best talents, our former STARS member, uh, and uh, I'd like to introduce Cole Heistead. Cole, would you stand up? <laughs> Cole is a past uh, STAR member and uh, has been on the board for five years. Uh, and has an active role and has made a great contribution to the board and we sincerely thank him and we hope future stars and stars today can be on our board, so thank you. At this time, I would like to turn over uh, the podium to Kelly Reichdahl. All right. I'll be the one taking the photos, so right down there. Smile right, right at me. 
So my name is Kelly Karwaski Reichdahl, and I have been serving on the Education Foundation Board for about two years now. A little background on how I got here on stage at the 622 Education Foundation Stars Banquet. I graduated Tartan High School in 2001, and full candor, at this time I did not know this foundation or this banquet even existed. Uh, so I did not attend as a high schooler. Uh, fast forward a few years, in 2009 I was picked to be an ambassador for the St. Paul Winter Carnival and I traveled the country representing our state capital. As an ambassador of St. Paul, I attended about 365 community-driven events in one year. That's about an average of one event a day. During this time, I learned community is an important aspect of having a sense of pride in where you are from. It is, even, it is events like these that bring out the community in full force. Think about it. At this community event, how proud are you? On a scale of one to 10, I think I'm at about a high nine. And I don't even have a kid in this room, so I can only imagine how the parents are feeling right now. Um, at, attending this many events in one year, I was able to experience firsthand what other communities have to offer. I can wholeheartedly say there are very few events in our state that compare to this 622 Stars Banquet. So two years ago when my dad, Stan, asked me to come check out a board meeting, I jumped at the chance to get involved. We are fortunate to live in a 622 community where local businesses, community leaders, and community members at large step up, come together to recognize and celebrate great academic life achievements. A big thank you to all of our sponsors. Without you, this event would not and could not happen. Because of your generosity as a table donor, we are able to keep this a free event to students, parents, and mentors. With this said, students, you received a thank you card when you uh, came and checked in. Do you have them? Let's see them. Did you lose them? I don't see them. I don't see them. Uh, so please fill these out. Look at, look at your table uh, and thank those who really put you in these seats. Um, and leave them on the table unsealed and we will pick them up and get those to the sponsors. Uh, we also have a list of sponsors in this booklet on page five. Uh, so please look through them before you frame this booklet and put it on your wall. So I know the next time I pay my bill to XL Energy, I'm gonna picture my money going towards this event. Uh, they're a new table sponsor this year, so thank you. Again, I cannot thank the sponsors enough. Know that you're making an impact in your community and creating a sense of pride, so thank you for supporting our event. I know what you all are thinking. You have about three questions for me. Uh, first question, what can I do now? Uh, well, let's start now. This is a really easy do. So if everybody could take out your phones, also not a drill, so you've got your thank you cards. Take out your phones. And please like us on Facebook. Uh, just search 622 Education Foundation. You press the thumbs up button or the like button. It's easy as that. So note, this is where all of the photos will be posted. Pam Huntley put together that great backdrop back there and she was taking photos. That will still be up at the end of the night. So bring your families, bring your friends, take as many photos with that backdrop. Uh, the ones that we professionally took will be posted on this Facebook site. Uh, so give us a share, share your photo, give us a shout out about this event and how great it was. Uh, the second question you're asking yourself is how can I help in the future? Uh, you can donate money. So if you, again, on your phone, uh, if you search 622 Education Foundation for the website, you can go ahead and check it out right now. Uh, it is very user friendly. If you donate now, there is no need to pay attention to the rest of my speech. Uh, I, won't, I won't even be mad. So how many of you have seen that newer feature on Facebook where you can have people donate for a cause for your birthday? So please keep us in mind during your birthday cause. This also helps create awareness for our foundation and does uh, provides to our community. Um, I'm gonna have three birthdays this year, I've decided. So keep, keep your eye out. Uh, another example of how you can help us is sign up to receive our updates also on our website. This will remind you of what events are coming up, like our Taste of 622 event in November and our Fall Color Run in October. Um, when you sign up for that race, you get this really cool shirt probably a different color next year, uh, provided by Big Frog, who's also a table sponsor, so thank you. And then our final, 
Um, the updates also provide info on foundation initiatives, um, and it'll alert you when you are looking for table sponsors next year for the STARS event. Um, a great example is Let's Pay It Forward. Uh, this year was a great example of 2015 STARS uh, graduates actually donated one of the tables, which I think is excellent. So let's pay it forward in the future, and maybe 2018 can pull their money together and sponsor one of these tables that you're sitting at. So the final question that you're, I'm sure you're asking yourself is, how can I get involved in this foundation? Yes, we are currently looking for people to join our board and or volunteer for our events. We meet once a month for about 45 minutes, and we have three events a year. This is one of them. So I personally can, cannot give away money all the time, but I can give away my time. So if you have any questions about our foundation, I will be around after the program. Stop by and see me or any other board member. They say knowledge is power, and I implore you to learn more and tell others about this event and our foundation. Keep us top of mind when you're thinking about where to give back. And congrats to those students, parents, and mentors for being recognized tonight. I know you will go on to do great things, like join our board in the future. Uh, so thank you. Um, I'd like to introduce Kathleen Hess, who's going to be uh, doing the address and the MC uh, for tonight's event. So Kathleen, would you come on up? Kathleen is a uh, board member of the 622 and uh, obviously is employed by the District 622. So Kathleen, please. Well, good evening. My name is Kathleen Hess, Communications Coordinator for School District 622 and a Director for the 622 Education Foundation. Typically, Superintendent Christine Osorio would MC this evening's event, but she's out recovering from a surgery. She's doing just fine, and she's excited to be back to work, but she does ex extend her heartfelt congratulations to all of our students tonight. To that end, this is a very special evening for the top achievers of our 2018 graduates. I too am excited to celebrate your successes. Let's give it up for these scholars. As Tom mentioned earlier, this is the 22nd annual STARS Banquet, and by now, you know that STARS stands for Students and Teachers Achieving Academic Recognition and Success. The students honored tonight represent the top 10% of the graduating class at North Ann Tartan. In addition, each student selected an influential teacher, coach, or mentor to attend tonight's special event. As you page through the program, you'll notice each student listed a reason why their guest, why their guest is so important to them. <clears throat> of the 77 students honored tonight, 18 of them have a grade point average of 3.0 or higher, one has a GPA of 4.0 right on the nose, and 58 have a GPA above 4.0. Virtually all of them plan to go on to higher education, and in doing so, will spread out across the U.S., from St. Paul, Minnesota, to Kansas City, Missouri, and La Crosse, Wisconsin, to Omaha, Nebraska. Students in this room plan to pursue many career paths, including journalism, medical engineering, law, the medical profession, veterinary medicine, and the public sector. Thank you to the parents and families of these outstanding scholars. The commitment you've shown and the love you've shown for your students from their earliest years is evident in who they are right now. Their futures are limitless. Thank you for believing in them. It's time to enjoy the night. On behalf of the entire 622 Education Foundation, students, we are so very proud of you, and congratulations on becoming a shining star. Tonight's speakers are a wonderful blend of students, staff, and a beloved former District 622 teacher. Our first speaker attends North High School. He attended St. Peter Catholic School and Maplewood Middle. 
In high school, he focused on math and science. He was captain of the bowling team, distance captain of track and field, electrical captain of the robotics team, the secretary group leader of the National Honor Society, and took an active role with vocation, vacation Bible school at his church. After high school, he plans to attend the University of Minnesota Duluth to study chemical engineering. He also plans to participate in bowling and many types of musical performance. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Brett Gouliash. Why, hello, everyone. Hope you guys are all enjoying yourselves tonight. Today, to, uh, tonight I want to start with a question for all of you guys. Um, the question is, what is the highest, what is the thing of highest value that you think you learned in high school? So everyone can think about this, parents, students, everyone involved. And I think for many of us, this is a very hard question. Many of us want to say that we learn many things of value, but a lot of us can't think about like, what is the thing of most value? Or some of us, that this includes myself as well, are a bit more cynical about it. I think that we didn't really learn anything of value. We say that the, yeah, we say that high school has limitations when it comes to teaching us. While I did feel like in the beginning of my time in high school, I definitely thought this was true. However, over time, I discovered that the most important lessons that you learned in high school aren't always like calculating the circumference of a circle or finding the product of a reaction, or reciting a bunch of lines of Shakespeare. It's the interactions that you have with other people. And just, so to start, why, one of the questions I have, and many of you do, is why do people think that they've learned nothing of value in high school? Well, the main argument for this is high school doesn't teach you life skills to prepare you for the real world, like buying a house or buying insurance. Many people see this as like a disservice to the students, but also to like the um, to community and society as well, because ignorant people aren't very good for a functioning society, so you think people need to be educated in these areas. However, while this is a very good point, I do believe there's still plenty of learning to be done in school, and most of this is with interactions between other students. When I first came to North, it was a huge culture shock for me. As said before, I went to St. Peter's for elementary school, and it was a great and wonderful place full of awesome people and it was a fantastic education. However, the diversity there wasn't very high. Most of us came from a very similar background and while this wasn't a bad thing, it made going to Maplewood Middle School a lot different. Middle school was very new for me mainly because of this culture difference. High school was the exact same way. I experienced growth in my thoughts because many of the things that I thought were true weren't exactly as I envisioned them to be. So this is what I think is the highest, is the highest value to learn in high school. Learn how to interact with people that are very different than you. In the real world after high school, you'll encounter all kinds of different people. Some will be nice, some will not. Some will be interesting and fun, some will not. And some will be inviting of your culture and beliefs, while others will not. At some point in life, you have to learn how to interact with all these kinds of people. If you don't, you're seen as someone who is hostile and intolerant. I find it is important to learn these skills when you are younger, because it is easier while you were in school before college, you were less set in your ways. In high school, you start to um, uh, become more set in your ways, so it's good to be, or good to form yourself as a tolerable and hospitable person. I've learned these lessons simply just by interacting with other people. After school activities are fantastic for this. I learned many great things about people and their beliefs through activities such as track, band, and many other things. This has turned me into a different person than I was before leaving a private school and coming to a public one. All of you are sitting here, all the students here, have accomplished many great things at North and Tartan. I also believe you have learned many of the things that I have. Many of you probably didn't seek out to adapt like I have, but just being in one of these schools changed you. It made you think more about who you are as a person, and because of that, you changed without even thinking about it. As I see these things, many people out there probably think that I'm just talking to one specific group of people. However, I am not because toler tolerance and friendliness is something that we all must strive to achieve. As the Franciscan friar Maximilian Kolbe once said, the most deadly poison of our times is indifference. While he said this in the context of World War II, it certainly applies to our time. If we are indifferent, we dif distance ourselves from those who, that, that we can help and those that could help us. 
thing, the things we don't know, like the ones previously mentioned, can be learned by meeting a diverse group of people. And to wrap this all up, learning to work with other people may not seem like the most useful thing in school, but it definitely is. If we don't, we work towards creating a world full of indifference and conflict. Over the course of our lives, we will do many things, such as buying a house, balancing a checkbook, renting a car, or buying insurance. Well, this would be good to learn in school. I think with a lot, I think meeting lots of different people helps with this as well. The more people you know, the more connections you make, and so the things you didn't know in school, you can then later learn from somebody that you do know. So my ending advice, if you want it, is for all is this: for us seniors, be as good as a person as you can, be a friend lots of different people, and you'll go far. For the younger people out there, because there are some, uh, meet as many people as you can and become active in your school, because then you'll interact with a bunch of people, and then you'll end up going far. I hope all of you guys are having a great night, and remember, the most valuable things you learn in life aren't always how to balance a checkbook. Thank you. That was great. So well spoken, Brett. Thank you so much. Next, we have our speaker from Skyview. Um, Skyview, you guys. You knew the nerves would come out at some point, didn't you? Our next speaker is from Tartan. She too has a, a very busy high school experience. Let me find this here. She attended Skyview Elementary and Skyview Middle. In high school, she focused on math and science and took part in the math team, Link Crew, Relay for Life, and Uprising. In the future, she plans to work in the chemistry field. Please help give me a warm welcome to Ms. Chisholm Ozo Ozokio. the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. This is the definition of success. It is something every person wants to, to feel because it is a wonderful feeling to accomplish your goal. However, not everyone can achieve this goal. Why? Because in this world, there are two kinds of people, the dreamers and the doers. Harry Wayne Huizenga, a late businessman, used to say, some people dream of success, while others get up every morning and make it happen. Good evening, families, teachers, fellow students, and distinguished guests. We are gathered here today to celebrate the achievement of the most academically driven kids at Tartan High School and North High School. I congratulate each and every one of you for your excellence. I wish to thank our parents, teachers, guardians, and coaches, whose guidance and sacrifice have played a large role in our being here today. Like all great things in life, success does not come easy. Of course, there is no need for me to tell you this. This group of students already understands the struggle that accompanies success. According to Hugh Zenga, we are the doers, the ones who take steps to experience how remarkable success is. All the students in this room are familiar with this amazing feeling. We spend days writing our essays for English, studying hours for economic tests, or even staying after school to get extra help with our science and math classes, something I am guilty of at least once or twice a week. We do all of this and our hard work pays off when we get an A on our papers and tests and when we finally understand how to do calculus. And we are not simply scraping by to graduate. Most of us here have been taking rigorous courses throughout our high school years, from AP classes to CIS classes or even PSEO. And those are just academics. Many of us are involved in things such as community service, sports, math team, yearbook, theater, and so many other activities outside of school. 
And on top of all of that, a lot of us have jobs as well. With all these things going on in our lives, it would be so easy for us to just use them as, as excuses and not to do well in our courses. I had practice today, so I won't do my homework. Or I have rehearsal late tonight, so I won't study for my science test. <coughs> or even I have nothing important to do, but I'm not going to study for my history test. I hope I get an A. This is not the way we think, because we are not dreamers. We are doers. Even when the going is rough, we do everything we can to do well in school. Even if we make the occasional mistake of procrastinating a bit too much, we put in 100% in everything we can do. If we know ahead of time that rehearsal will be running late, we make plans to do a homework before or after it. If we know that we will have practice, we plan to get our homework done. And if I do not have to do calculus, well, that's what it happens to hire us for. <laughs> and for those of us who are not so great at planning things, we still always make time to do what we can to, to get good grades. Why? Because we want to achieve success, one of the greatest feelings humans have ever known. We smile when we get an anti paper that we spend hours working on. We pump our fists in the air when we do great on a history test. And we cry tears of joy when we pass our, our AP exams. Well, maybe not everyone does that last part, but I do sometimes. <laughs> we have been working so hard these last four years of high school. And look at where he's landed us now. We are the smartest and most hardworking students that Tartan and North have to offer. We are viewed with respect by our fellow classmates, appreciated by our dedicated teachers, and have made our loving and doting parents so proud. But if you've learned anything from me in these last couple of minutes, is that success is not a one-time thing. If we were to assess how hard we have worked these last four years, it is almost a guarantee that we will be successful as we continue our future endeavors. Of course, as long as we keep working hard. We are all familiar with the, with the, familiar with the potential obstacles that may come in our way, but clearly they have not stopped us in, up until now. And if we push ourselves, the way we've been doing all four years of, of high school, we will always be able to push down any barrier that comes between us and our goal of success. We will never be satisfied with dreaming because we are doers. We will always do what we can to make our dreams come true. Thank you. Thank you, Chisholm. That was outstanding. Next, we have our teacher speaker from North, Ms. Kate Lydon. She has been teaching at North High School since 2003. She enjoys spending time with her family, as well as baking, reading, being outdoors, and rooting for the Golden, for the golden Gophers. She also loves being a teacher. She teaches students in grades 9 through 12, enrolled in child development 1 and 2, parenting issues, and advanced foods. She also teaches a CIS course through the University of Minnesota called Exploring the Teaching Profession. Lastly, she is a co-advisor for the National Honor Society. Please help me welcome Ms. Kate Lydon. Students, teachers and mentors, parents, honored guests, school board members, 622 Education Foundation, cabinet members, and community partners, I'm honored to be here tonight speaking amongst you. Students, tonight you've earned the accolades that you are receiving. This is something you should be really proud of. I am super proud of you. Your teachers and mentors sitting at your table are really proud of you. Your parents, your grandparents, your brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, everyone who's watched you grow is extremely proud of you. 
Soak this moment up. As children grow, the people in their lives often talk about the time and work kids put in at school as being preparation for some future predestined career that will provide you a life of money and status in hopes to bring you happiness and fulfillment. I think that's a shame. It sells so many of you short for all of the great, fulfilling things that you've already done that have brought you happiness and fulfillment. In addition to being great students and finishing in the top 10% of your graduating class, so many of you are athletes, mentors, musicians, artists, role models, volunteers, just to name a few. All of these experiences have shaped who you are today and will help shape you in the future. These roles are not only things for applications and resumes, but are current present realities that create happiness and fulfillment in your present day life. My current and present reality when I was your age was based in Chaska, Minnesota, a very small homogenous town with a limit to what it could ever teach me about the real world. I was a great student, an athlete, a mentor, a role model, a volunteer, and all those things brought me a lot of joy and fulfillment, but I longed to get out of my small community and get out to see what the real world had to offer. I began school at the University of Minnesota as a pre-nursing student, thinking my love for biology and dissecting would serve me well in an emergency room and would help make me some decent money. I quickly learned through an internship that the hospital environment was not filled with the hope and enthusiasm that I had been looking for. So I moved on and studied and got a degree in family social sciences, and then I worked in a few different nonprofit organizations where I spent a lot of time in meetings, at a desk, with adults talking about things we could do, watching the clock day in and day out. It drove me crazy to sit around and do so much talking and not doing any action things. I was really unhappy and unfulfilled in my career. And I woke up one day and realized there was just no way I could live the rest of my life like this. During this time, I'd also been volunteering and working with youth. And I realized that young people and teaching was my true passion. Now, this was a really scary moment for me because I knew I had to make a change. And like many of you probably, I don't love change. Uh, but it was a risk that I knew that I had to take. So when I was 24 years old, I quit my career, went back to the University of Minnesota full time to get my teaching license, waitressed on the side to help pay the mortgage, and became a family and consumer sciences teacher. That was 16 years ago, and I have never looked back. As a teacher, each day brings action and newness. Each day, my soul is filled with the energy of you all. Each day, I drive home grateful that I get to be a part of someone's current reality as well as their preparation for their future. Each day, I talk with students about problems they face in life. Each day, I get to celebrate students' most meaningful moments. And each day, I get to interact with beautiful human beings to hold their hands as they hold mine as we walk through this reality together. I tell you all of this because as you end this chapter in your life and begin another, I want you to find a career and a path in your life that brings you as much joy and fulfillment as mine brings me. I want you to be able to look back someday on your life and know that you spent your life doing something that you loved, that truly made you happy. Because your happiness and the happiness of others matters. It matters how you make other people feel. This is not the kind of happiness when you feel when you have hundreds of people like your Insta post. Seriously. Um, I'm talking about the work that makes your life feel meaningful. And you can do this in any career. But research is clear and continues to support the idea that 90% of your long-term happiness and fulfillment is determined by how you think. 
not by how much money you make or what kind of house you live in, that happiness is created by helping others. So I will leave you with this. Take the time tonight to be proud of yourself and what you have achieved up to this point in your life. It is a true accomplishment. But as you leave high school and enter the next stage of your life, explore what makes you truly fulfilled as a person. Learn about the world and people and things that are different from you and your worldview. Find out what makes you excited to get up each morning and what will allow you to look back 50 years from now and know that you have made both yourself and other people happy. Challenge yourself to find what makes you fulfilled and if you find yourself unhappy, take the risk to make a change so you can be the best you always. Thank you and congratulations. Such great speakers tonight, it's just outstanding. Kate, thanks again. Our keynote speaker is a retired 622 teacher. Throughout the years, she has attended this banquet in many roles, but I have to tell you, when she was here two years ago as a guest of the keynote speaker, she immediately attracted a pack of fans made up of former students. This individual taught choir and general music at John Glenn for 13 years, choir at Tartan for five, and at Weaver for 12 years. She has been retired for five years and now enjoys sewing clothes and quilts. She also enjoys water sports such as kayaking, sailing, and paddle boarding. Aside from those activities, she sings with a 17-piece big band and plays piano professionally. I'm not entirely sure when she has time to sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the very beloved Mrs. Jody McCormick. I honestly thought when she was speaking at the beginning that she had totally skipped my part of the program. I didn't know who you were talking about. That was very sweet. Thank you, Kathleen. I trust you can all hear okay? No, we're having a hard, we were having a hard time earlier, but this seems like it's working better. So, um, you know, only in the world of education, where your second hour class starts at 9.16 and ends at 10.11, would someone be asked to speak from 7.23 to 7.33? <laughs> and the fact that it's now 8.01 has me completely flummoxed. <laughs> but I'm going to give it my best. Students, there is a reason you're here tonight, and it has to do with your smarts, your work ethic, and your GPA. One might say this is a room full of know-it-alls. Being a know-it-all is often associated with your generation, but it's not confined only to the young. Many adults in this room qualify as well. We know-it-alls are misunderstood, but every once in a while, it's a good reminder that other people might know some things too. Shocking, isn't it? <clears throat> Six years ago, I entered into a life and death battle with cancer. Spoiler alert, I won. <laughs> Let me tell you about my victory lap. After a year of being on the receiving end of so much love and support, it was my turn to give back. So I decided to volunteer in the chemo unit at a local hospital, as my chemo experience was actually kind of fun. Well, I made it fun by wearing mismatched socks and weird scarves and naming my port, Portia, <laughs> to make the journey more entertaining. So on the very first hour of my very first day, of my very first week of being a volunteer, I was partnered up with an 80-year-old, tiny, tough-as-nails volunteer trainer, Marcy. 
Immediately, she asked me if I had a piece of paper and a pen so I could write down some instructions on how to deal with these cancer patients. I told her no, and she literally thrust a hunk of scrap paper and a pen into my hand and said, write this down, and she started talking a mile a minute, and off we went toward the chemo unit at a very quick pace. Marcy giving me orders and me madly taking notes and saying, yes, Marcy, yes, Marcy, I've got this, when boom, we arrived in the treatment room, and there he was, my very first chemo patient as a volunteer, a burly-looking man dressed in bright orange. And I thought, a kindred spirit, someone who knows how to face this challenge with humor. I thought, this guy gets it. Clearly, we have something in common. This will be the perfect job for me. As Marcy delivered her scripted line, can I get you some juice or a blanket? I'm thinking, hold on, Marcy. This guy is my guy. So I practically elbowed my way in front of her and said, that is so cool that you are wearing that blaze orange color. Good choice. You got this. Marcy interrupted me with the whole, is there anything I can get you to make you more comfortable thing? And I'm thinking, hey, Marcy, get out of the way. I beat cancer. I got this. In my mind, I'm figuring she was speaking to him so formally because he's an elected official, like the mayor of North St. Paul, since he was flanked by two important-looking guys wearing uniform. I barely gave the guy a chance to respond to her offers before I gave him another thumbs up and commented once again on his snazzy choice of color <laughs> and suggested he had really figured it out. <laughs> I've been there. When you're facing chemo, you need distractions. He looked a bit bewildered. And then in a shocking display of disrespect, Marcy grabs me and pulls me out of the room. I'm thinking, geez, woman, loosen up. It has to be OK to go off script in such a special circumstance. When I hear her sweetly say, but firmly, Jody, did you not see the shackles on his ankles? <laughs> At the bottom of his orange jumpsuit? the one that says Minnesota Correctional Facility. <laughs> so what's the message here, students? Even us know-it-alls don't always know it all. Listen to your elders. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. That was great. Next, I'd like to recognize our scholarship recipients. The 622 Education Foundation, in partnership with the Coaction Academic Resources, is pleased to award the scholarships listed on page 8 in your program. At the end of these introductions, I'll invite all of these scholarship grantees and the scholarship grantors to stand for applause. First. The Mike White Scholarship will be awarded to one graduate from North or Tartan in the top 10% of his or her graduating class. This individual has also made contributions to the community. I'm pleased to announce that this year's scholarship goes to Glenn Nielsen from North. Next, the Fulton Clinkerfuse Scholarship will be awarded to a graduate pursuing a degree in education. This student has demonstrated a clear interest in working with youth. Marty Sheeta from North is this year's recipient. We are, yes, Marty, good, congratulations, come on up.
We are also lucky enough to have Mr. Klinkerfuse's daughter, Chris Klinkerfuse, with us tonight. Let's give it up for them. The Carl Lipke Vocal Music Scholarship is awarded to a graduating North senior accepted into a four-year college majoring in vocal or music education. This year's scholarship goes to Ms. Allison Anderson. <laughs> Lastly, the Hal and Marion Norgard Scholarship is awarded to students in the top 20% of their class who have made significant contributions to the community. Hal and Marion's daughter, Candy Peterson, is with us tonight. This year's scholarship goes to Spencer York from North and Andrew Acola from Tartan. Please. everyone, it's time for the recognition portion of this event. This is the exciting part, right? Students will line up on one side of the stage and their special guests will line up on the other. So students, we're going to ask you to uh, line up in alphabetical order and guests, please arrange yourselves in a pattern that will allow you to meet your student at the stage, on the stage, at the same time. And before you do, hold that thought. Once your names are announced, we ask that you meet on top of, on top of, or in front of the stage to greet one another. Um, as Tom mentioned earlier, we've witnessed some pretty interesting acrobatics up here over the years. So however you choose to greet your guest, please be safe. <laughs> Lastly, <laughs> are you all planning your greetings right now? I can tell. <laughs> once, once you arrive at the bottom of the stage, just a reminder, pause and look ahead at the photographer, Kelly, in the center aisle. She's wearing a red cardigan. She'll take your photo. You may then go to the back of your seats. With that, I am pleased to have our distinguished high school principals introduce these students and their special guests. We will start with North High. As we get started tonight, I would just like to make quick introductions. North Admin runs um, on the team concept. My teammates are here tonight. I would like to point out Cheryl Leon, Gary Spees, Judd Helwig, and our true team leader, Mary Kay Evans. Would you give them a quick round of applause? And to get started tonight, the first North Star student is Tajuri Abugamu. Parents are Effie and Atari Abugamu. Guest of honor, Ricardo Boren. So just to clarify, we're going that way, everyone, when we get our award. <laughs> Next is Aaron Anderson, parents Michelle and Glenn Anderson, guest of honor, Alex Moe. <laughs> Jared Batesold. Parent John Batesold, guest of honor is Amy Keys. And next is Christopher Barber, parents Shan, uh, Shannon and Chris Barber, guest of honor Peg Sorensen. <laughs> 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 
Can we sneak in a quick round of applause for Peg? She's retiring this year after many, many years at North Carolina. Next from North is Colin Barrett, parents Leslie Peabody Barrett and Tim Barrett, guest of honor Richard Siver. And next from North is Josephine Borchert, parents Donna and Dave Borchert, guest of honor Lauren Lindgren. <laughs> Chloe Braybender, parents are Christy and Jason Braybender, guest of honor Scott Sturm. Next from North is Emma Christopher. Parents, Lynn and Eric Christopher. Guest of honor is Tom Waffler. <laughs> Mackenzie Claypool is next. Parents are Jennifer and Mark Claypool. Guest of honor, Anne Marie Sass. Next from North is Isabel Etlinger. Parents are Cheryl and Kurt Etlinger. Guest of honor, Corey Crothers. <laughs> and next up from North is Maggie Griffin. Parents are Jody and Paul Griffin. Guest of honor, none other than Cheryl Leon. Next up, excuse me. I'm used to doing that with Cheryl. To get a word in edgewise, you got to just get right in. So, hi. Um, next from North is Brett Gouliash. And how about that speech he gave tonight? Parents are Cindy and Tony Gouliash. Guest of honor, Tim Teacots. Sophie Gustafson, parents Nancy and David Gustafson, guest of honor is Amy Cluck. In our next North student is Daniel Hagedorn. Parents are Catherine and Thomas Hagedorn, guest of honor Kerrig Hagee. Libby, Lib, Libby Haggerty, parents Kathy and Brian Haggerty, guest of honor tonight is Jennifer Cook. <laughs> and next from north is Li Pao Her, parents Zai Tao and Chu Young Her, guest of honor is Nick Kruger. Anna Himmer, parents Amy and Tim Himmer, guest of honor, Travis Stewart. <laughs> and 
And next from North is Nicholas Jaskolski. Parents Jackie and John Jaskolski. Guest of honor is Bob Hackney. Next from North is Kyle Johnson. Parents are Kelly and John Johnson. Guest of honor, Alex Alvarez. And next from North is Shelby Larson. Parents, Johanna Fox and Mike Larson. Guest of honor, Kate Lydon. And how about her speech tonight? Great. And I'm happy to slip in that just off of a fresh North softball playoff win here tonight is Kelly McCain. Parents Shelly and Tim McCain, guest of honor is Rachel Whitney. Next from, next from North is Anna Madrano, parents Joni and David Madrano, guest of honor is Paula Clegg. <laughs> Katie Milton, parents are Rossi and Scott Milton, guest of honor Deborah McCutchinson. Next from North, Madeline Malnahan, uh, parents of Brian and Cheryl Malnahan, guest of honor, Kendra Moline. <laughs> Next from North is Maxwell Murray, parents are Patsy and Tim Murray, guest of honor, Mary Dvorak. Next up is Kim Wynn, parents Lan Lee and Kwok Wynn, guest of honor, Michelle Zwern. <laughs> Glenn Nielsen is next from North, parents Michelle and Mark Lemire, guest of honor is Dave Moran. Elizabeth Pardo, parents Anne and Andrew Pardo, guest of honors Amy Mess. <laughs> Next up, Alexa Peterson, parents Karen and Glenn Peterson, guest of honor Adam Carlson. Alex Reiner, parents Brenda and Steve Reiner. Guest of honor tonight is Mary Milzarek. <laughs> Next from North is Grace Rolliter, parents Wendy and John Rolliter. Guest of honor is Jody Murphy.
Manny Simonis, parents Cheryl and Daryl Simonis, guest of honor Jim Hanza. And next up from north is Lauren Shipman, parents Deborah Keen and Rebecca Ship, uh, Shipman, guest of honor Lynn Schweeters. <laughs> Tyler Szymanski is next from north. His parents are Pam and Lee Szymanski and guest of honor Aaron Hammerman. Well done. <laughs> Lost my place. <laughs> Next from North is Joshua Stenman, parents Amy and Jason Stenman, guest of honor Melissa Mandel. Next is Andrew Serene, parents Jill and James Serene, guest of honor Sarah Pierce. <laughs> Jasmine Alvin is next, parents are Grace and Ted Alvin, guest of honor Keith Reynolds. We're good now, right? <laughs> uh, next from north is Ana Valdovinos, parent Ramona Bolivariar. Uh, guest of honor is Russell Sean. <laughs> next from north is Benjamin Vang, parents Gao Zhu Her and Bob Vang, guest of honor Feng Vang. Regis Vang is next from North, parents Chow Yang and Song Vang. Guest of honor, Jeff Middlestead. <laughs> and Stacy Vang is next, Bao Her and B Vang parents. Brian Shaw is the guest of honor. And next from North is Melody Yang. Parents Mia Yelor and Bob Yang. Guest of honor, Don Gelking. And our last star student from North High School is Jonathan Urich. Parents are Colleen and Peter Urich. Guest of honor, Paul Dean. All right, how about one more round of applause for the winners from North? Well, that was fun. Should we do it again? Okay. Uh, next up, I'd like to welcome to the stage Mrs. Ty Thompson. 
in addition to all of our Tartan Star students. Come on up. I'm Ty Thompson. I'm the principal at Tartan High School. Before we begin with the awards this evening, I would like to acknowledge what amazing students, staff, and community members we have here in District 622. I'd like to thank my administrative team and clerical staff that are present this evening. Could you please stand and be recognized, Assistant Principal Dr. Nancy Winand, and Activities Assistant Patty Trundle. Thank you. Guys switched up on me, students. <laughs> this evening is one of many events that will take place over the next few weeks marking the culmination of your high school careers. I'm so proud of all of you, not only for your academic achievements and placing in the top of your graduating class, but also for the type of people that you have all become. <laughs> Within this room, thousands of community service hours have been dedicated, fundraising dollars donated, and scholarships earned. I could go on and on listing the countless accomplishments you have achieved. I want you to know that this is truly unique and not something that all students are able to achieve during their high school careers. Your accomplishments speak to who each and every one of you are as individuals. And I cannot wait to see where you will be in the future. Parents, family members, and honored guests. Thank you as well for helping our students develop into the young adults they are today. Your support, guidance, and at times gentle push help to ensure that they are the ones occupying the seats surrounding us this evening. Thank you. I'd now like to transition into the formal recognition of our students and their guests of honor. First to the stage, we have Andrew Okola, parents are Melanie and Michael Okola, and guest of honor is Becky Boyle. <laughs> Lita Albright, parents are Janine and Steve Albright, and guest of honor, Karen Hires. Nathan Alamo, parents are Azib and Solomon Alamo, and guest of honor is Dennis Andruski. <clears throat> Paula Alihonu, parents are Kaya Ajavan, and guest of honor is Monica Dahlberg. Sean Berth, his parents are Ann and Ken Berth, and his guest of honor is Doug Norlander. <laughs> Emily Best, her parents are Cheryl and Dave Best, and her guest of honor is Mary Jo Weirham. AJ Broviak, his parents are Sarah Christensen and Steve Broviak, and his guest of honor is Steve Heyman. <laughs> ben Bruin, his parents are Lori and Ronald Bruin, and his guest of honor is Matthew Oberg.
Cassie Kadri. Her parents are Elizabeth and Dave Kadri. And her guest of honor is Kelly Herrera. Emily Carlton. Her parents are Sarah and Mark Carlton, and her guest of honor is Scott Lotze. <laughs> Zoe Kalshal Klein. Her parents are Katie Kalshal and Tom Klein, and her guest of honor is Eric Tweeden. Amy Dow, her parents are Teresa Dong and Quinn Dow, and her guest of honor is Vicki Capon. <laughs> Connor Dury Ekstrom, his parents are Don and Todd Ekstrom, and the guest of honor is Carla Peroni. <laughs> Margaret Engstrom, her parents are Cheryl and Matthew Engstrom, and her guest of honor is Kristen First. Rachel Forsen, her parent is Roberta Forsen, and her guest of honor is Sarah Lynn Knutson. <laughs> Anna Green, her parents are Amy and Tom Green, and her guest of honor is Liz Caldwell. Read it, Halm. Sorry, read it. Read it, Haile Mikael. Uh, her parents are Ama or Magia and Sebla Wengli Dabi, Dadi, and her guest of honor is Dean Reisner. Gabby Hicks, her parents are Christina Hicks and Jim Gruntner, and her guest of honor is Daryl Zizki. <laughs> Abigail Jansen, her parents are Jennifer and Anthony Jansen, and her guest of honor is Beth Ingberg. <laughs> Andrea Lindner, her parents are Rosie and Mark Lindner, and her guest of honor is Shannon Ostertag. Danielle Lo, her parents are Lee Li Lee and Fung Lo, and the guest of honor is Karina Hunt. <laughs> Bo
Perry Mazza. Her parents are Carmen and Patrick Mazza, and her guest of honor is Bethany Higgins. Caleb McDonald, his parents are Jocelyn and Chuck McDonald, and his guest of honor is Matt Dedeker. <laughs> Amber Wynn, her parents are Lon Tran and Chi Wynn, and her guest of honor is John Pavoni. Tina Orlani Ron, her parent is Owafemi Awadasa, and her guest of honor is Rachel Grayson. Chisholm Ozioko. Her parent is Ijoima Asoagua, and her guest of honor is Michelle Dizek. <laughs> Wyatt Peterson. His parents are Carrie and Jesse Peterson, and his guest of honor is Ken Balfans. <laughs> Bennett Pagansky. His parents are Dora Lee and Steve Pagansky, and his guest of honor is Vicki Fellows. Adam Ravor, his parents are Deborah and William Ravor, and his guest of honor is Lori Rabel. <laughs> Karen Rosell, her parents are Adele and John Rosell, and her guest of honor is Jasmine Wheeler. Hannah Tahara, her parents are Caroline and Martin Tahara, and her guest of honor is Larissa Rosenau. <laughs> Andy Tran. His parent is Tien Tran, and his guest of honor is Josh Granlin. <laughs> Joseph Winthizer, his parents are Chris and Chris Winthizer, and his guest of honor is Billy Joe Schoen. Saki Yokoda, her parent is Sachi Yokoda, and her guest of honor is Kerr Tao. <laughs> and if we could give one final applause for our Tartan and our North Star students.
Thank you. Boy, this has been a long night, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, the, the, the 622 Education Foundation would like to thank everyone who came tonight and celebrate the 22nd annual STARS Banquet to celebrate the achievements of our STARS. So congratulations to all the scholarship winners. Uh, you truly earned it. I want to thank the teachers who made all these achievements possible. Um, you are the, our true heroes tonight. Thank you. To the, <laughs> to the parents who make the sacrifices to ensure the scholars achieve these great things, thank you. <laughs> and I hope as you've been sitting around at these tables with some great business people and some great contacts that you've exchanged contacts because all the great jobs in the world, 80% are received from someone you know, not by what you apply for, so remember that. And finally, be safe and stay so, so that your future family can achieve great things too. And good night and be blessed. <laughs>